I am very excited about this video. I've managed to get my hands on some of the original Titleist Pro V1s. These golf balls came out in the year 2000. And I'll be honest, these are the golf balls that changed golf. Now, in this video, I'm gonna test them. I'm gonna take them out on the golf course. I'm gonna test them here in the home simulator. I'm gonna put them head to head against the current Pro V1 as well to see how much has changed in 20 years. Now, thanks to my followers, Eric Winter and Andy Roman, who sent these. Honestly, these are hard to get hold of. In mint condition, never, ever used. So I'm excited to give these a proper test. Also, I'm gonna cut one open, see what's inside it. You know what the score is. We're gonna test the durability. And finally, we're gonna see how these original Pro V1s compare to the current one with the driver. Let's start off with some wedges first. So the first thing I wanna comment on is this packaging. How iconic is it still? The gold, the silver, the black writing. I mean, it's not too dissimilar to packaging that you see these days. And then opening them up, these golf balls, like I say, are brand new, never been used. And still, they look so similar in some regards. The simplicity of the Titleist logo. But on the side, this is the original, original logo. Pro V1 392. The 392 was for how many dimples it had on the golf ball. I mean, I remember when these first came out. I was a young, I was a junior golfer. I just remember not particularly using them unless I found them because they were so expensive as a kid. And now to be able to hit them out on the golf course and test them 20 years later is really exciting. So the first thing I did is hit a few putts and hit a few chips around the greens. Now, bearing in mind, this golf ball has never been hit in 20 years. I was excited to give these a little test. Now, after hitting puts and chips, I've got to say, it feels just as similar to a current Pro V1. I don't think around the greens is where the biggest difference is gonna be seen. I think you're gonna see a bigger difference in the longer shots and certainly in the driver. So the next thing I'm gonna do is hit 10 shots with the original Pro V, 10 shots with the current Pro V1 with a wedge and see what the numbers look like. So after hitting both balls with a wedge, we saw there was a slight difference in distance. Original Pro V1 carried 100 yards on the nose with around about 11 and a half thousand spin. New Pro V1 or current Pro V1 carried three yards further, which isn't a great deal and it had the same amount of spin. However, if it's three yards longer with a wedge, what we're gonna see with irons and drivers potentially. The one thing I did notice, however, when I hit original Pro V1, the cover came off much more. My face of my wedge now is covered in white urethane cover from this. Anyway, let's jump onto 7-iron next. Because of the wear and tear on the last test, I'm gonna use a fresh ball for each new round. Check this. So that's the seven iron shots being hit with the original and current. I just want to clear up what I said earlier. I used a brand new ball of each for this test. The scuff marks I saw on the sand wedge shots from the original Pro V, which by the way, I need to come on to in a minute. I didn't want that to affect the data. Seven irons, unbelievably similar numbers. Almost the same ball speed, the same carry distance, the same spin rate unbelievable 20 years of difference and not much difference in performance from what i'm seeing but yet we've not hit driver yet now one thing i want to touch on as well is feel in my head and again i have to rewind time to when i was a kid 
I remember the original Pro V1 being softer. It's possibly not. It feels almost exactly the same as, again, current Pro V1. Now, as I mentioned earlier, and you know this by now, it wouldn't be a rickshaw's ball review if we didn't chop one open, see what's inside both. I mean, it's going to somewhat hurt me to chop this one open, and I also want to show you the actual damage on the original one with the sandwich. That's the one I'm going to chop in half, actually. So this is the damage I saw on the original. Look at that, just 10 shots with a wedge and it is absolutely scuffed up. I mean, certainly on that side, where this is the current one and this golf ball looks brand new. Let's chop both of these two up to see what it looked like inside. Okay, so that was current one, which we'll show in a minute. This is the original. Now, hopefully this one's not like the professional 90. It's not liquid filled. I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure it's not. Oh, look at this. Chopping up an original Pro V1. Right. Let's see what they look like difference inside. That's current. You can see the different layers. This is just a standard Pro V1, not the Pro V1X. Pretty much that. And then this is the original. Wow. <laughs> In a weird way, not actually that much difference. You've got the three layers. You've got a big core. You've got an out outer mantle. You've got the layer. Probably the outer mantle is a little bit thicker on the current one compared to the original one. That's about it. And like I said, that cover over time has definitely improved. So the last test, the driver. I'm intrigued to know if there's much difference in distance and dispersion. The only things I've found so far is the durability to be different. For me, distances with wedges and seven irons have been unbelievably similar and feel has been so similar to the current model. Are we gonna see much difference with the big stick, with the driver? So the results are in. After hitting driver with the original Pro V1 and the current model, the difference is crazy. The current model carries two yards further. Can you believe that? 20 years of innovation has led to two yards. Now, you might look at that as a negative or a positive in the fact that as a negative, you think, well, golf ball surely should have developed so much further in that time frame but they have a little bit, not loads. The biggest difference for me is durability of the current model. And then from a positive standpoint, you've got to look at it and think the original Pro V1 that came out in the year 2000, it was such a game changer. Like, do you need to change it that much? Still, a lot of tour players use older versions of the Pro V. And with all that being said, I want to hear your thoughts. Do you think it's a positive or a negative? Leave your comments down below and we'll see you next time.